Good day, this is Professor Will, CBMD PhD today, Saturday, June 13th, 2020. It is 1.50.46 seconds a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is a continuation of my scientific research on bioinformatics. So let's get started here. Global alignment and local alignment. In global alignment, two sequences to be aligned are assumed to be generally similar over their entire length. Alignment is carried out from beginning to end. Of both sequences to find the best possible alignment across the entire length between the two sequences. This method is more applicable for aligning two closely related sequences of roughly the same length. For divergent sequences and sequences of variable lengths, this method may not be able to generate optimal results because it fails to recognize highly similar local regions between the two sequences. Local alignment, on the other hand, does not assume that the two sequences in question have similarity over the entire length. It only finds local regions with the highest level of similarity between the two sequences and aligns these regions without regard for the alignment of the rest of the sequence region. This approach could be used for aligning more divergent sequences with the goal of searching for conserved patterns in DNA or protein sequences. The two sequences to be aligned can be of different length. This approach is more appropriate for aligning divergent biological sequences containing only modules that are similar which are referred to as domains of motive. Alignment algorithms. Alignment algorithms, both global and local, are fundamentally similar and only differ in the optimization strategy used in aligning similar residues. Both types of algorithms can be based on one of three methods, the dot matrix method, the dynamic programming method, and the word method. Dot matrix and dynamic programming methods are discussed herein. The word method, which is used in fast database similarity searching, is introduced. Dot matrix method. The most basic sequence alignment method is the dot matrix method, also known as the dot plot method. It is a graphical way of comparing two sequences in a two-dimensional matrix. In the dot matrix, two sequences to be compared are written in the horizontal and vertical axis of the matrix. The comparison is done by scanning each residue of one sequence for similarity, with all residues in the other sequence. If a residue match is found, the dot is placed within the graph. Otherwise, the matrix positions are left blank. When the two sequences have substantial regions of similarity, Many dots line up to form contiguous diagonal lines, which reveal the sequence alignment. If there are interruptions in the middle of a diagonal line, they indicate insertions or deletions. Parallel diagonal lines within the matrix represent repetitive regions of the sequences. The problem exists when comparing large sequences using the dot matrix method, namely the high noise level. In most dot plots, dots are plotted all over the graph, scurrying identification of the true alignment. For DNA sequences, the problem is particularly acute because there are only four possible characters in DNA, and each residue therefore has a 1 in 4 chance of matching a residue in another sequence. To reduce noise, instead of using a single residue to scan for similarity, a filtering technique has to be applied, which uses a window of fixed length covering a stretch of residue parent. When applying filtering windows, slide across the two sequences to compare all possible stretches. Dots are only placed when a stretch of residues equal to the window size from one sequence matches completely with a stretch of another sequence. This method has been shown to be effective in reducing the noise level. The window is also called a tuple, the size of which can be manipulated so that a clear pattern of sequence match can be plotted. However, if the selected window size is too long, sensitivity of the alignment is lost. There are many variations of using the dot plot method. For example, a sequence can be aligned with itself to identify internal repeat element. In the self-comparison, there is a main diagonal for perfect matching of each residue. If repeats are present, short parallel lines are observed above and below the main diagonal. Self-complementarity of DNA sequences is also called inverted repeats. For example, those that form the stems of a hairpin structure can also be identified using a dot plot. In this case, a DNA sequence is compared with its reverse complemented sequence. Parallel diagonals represent the inverted repeats for comparing protein sequences. A weighing scheme has to be used to account for similarities of physiochemical properties of amino acid residues. The dot matrix method gives a direct visual statement of the relationship between two sequences and helps easy identification of the regions of greatest similarity. One particular advantage of this method is in identification of sequence repeat regions based on the presence of parallel diagonals of the same size vertically or horizontally in the matrix. The method thus has some application in genomics. It is useful in identifying chromosomal repeats and in comparing gene order conservation between two closely related genomes. It can also be used in identifying acid secondary structures through detecting self-complementarity of a sequence. The dot matrix method displays all possible sequence matches. However, it is often up to the user to construct a full alignment with insertions and deletions by linking nearby diagonals. Another limitation is visual analysis method, 
is that it lacks statistical rigor in assessing the quality of the alignment. The method is also restricted in pairwise alignment. It is difficult for the method to scale up to multiple alignment. Dot matcher aligns and displays dot plots of two input sequences, DNA or proteins, in FASTA format. A window of specified length and scoring scheme are used. Diagonal lines are only plotted over the position of the windows, if the similarity is above a certain threshold. Dot up align sequences using the word method. It is capable of handling genome line sequences. Diagonal lines are only drawn if exact matches of words, a specified length are found. Dot Helix is a dot matrix program for DNA or protein sequencing. The program has a number of options for line thresholds similar to window size. It implements scoring matrices for protein sequences. In addition to drawing diagonal lines with similarity scores above a certain threshold, the program displays actual pairwise alignment. Matrix Plot is a more sophisticated matrix plot program for alignment of protein and nucleic acid sequences. The user has the option of adding information such as sequence logo profiles and distant matrices from known three-dimensional structures of protein or nucleic acids. Instead of using dots and lines, the program uses colored grids to indicate alignment or other user defined information. Dynamic programming is a method that determines optimal alignment by matching two sequences for all possible pairs of characters between the two sequences. It is fundamentally similar to the dot matrix method in that it also creates a two-dimensional alignment grid. However, it finds alignment in a more quantitative way by converting a dot matrix into a scoring matrix to account for matches and mismatches between sequences. By searching for the set of highest scores in the matrix, the best alignment can be accurately obtained. Dynamic programming works by first constructing a two-dimensional matrix, whose axes are the two sequences to be compared. The residue matching is according to a particular scoring matrix. Scores are calculated one row at a time. This starts with the first row of one sequence, which is used to scan through the entire length of the other sequence followed by scanning in the second row. The scores are calculated. The scanning in the second row takes into account the scores already obtained in the first round. The best score is put into the bottom right corner of an intermediate matrix. This process is iterated until values for all the cells are filled. Thus, the scores are accumulated along the diagonal going from the upper left corner to the lower right corner. Once the scores have been accumulated in matrix, the next step is to find the path that represents the optimal alignment. This is done by tracing back to the matrix in reverse order from the lower right hand corner of the matrix toward the origin of the matrix in the upper left hand corner. The best matching path is the one that has the maximum total score. If two or more paths reach the same highest score, one is chosen arbitrarily to represent the best alignment. The path can also move horizontally or vertically at a certain point, which corresponds to introduction of a gap or an insertion or deletion for one of the two sequences. Gap penalties. Performing optimal alignment between two sequences often involves applying gaps that represent insertions and deletions. Because of natural evolutionary processes, insertions and deletions are relatively rare in comparison to substitutions. Introducing gaps should be made more difficult computationally reflecting the rarity of insertional and deletional events in evolution. However, Assigning penalty values can be more or less arbitrary because there is no evolutionary theory to determine a precise cost for introducing insertions and deletions. If the penalty values are set too low, gaps can become too numerous to allow even non-related sequences to be matched up with high similarity scores. If the penalty values are set too high, gaps may become too difficult to appear and reasonable alignment cannot be achieved, which is also unrealistic. Through empirical studies for globular proteins, a set of penalty values have been developed that appear to suit most alignment purposes. They are normally implemented as default values in most alignment programs. Another factor to consider is the cost difference between opening a gap and extending an existing gap. It is known that it is easier to extend a gap than has already been started. This gap opening should have a much higher penalty than gap extension. This is based on the rational that if insertions and deletions ever occur, several adjustment residues are likely to have been inserted or deleted together. Good day, this is Professor Will, CBMD, PhD on infectious disease, bioinformatics, and microbiology. Well, hope you enjoyed listening. Until next time, have a great day.